Hello drone racers, today we're going to be taking a look at the Free Sky Tyrannus QX7. You'll notice this one is blue because I got it from Banggood. So I'm actually going to start there where these normally come from the factory in white or black. Those are your two options. And the throttles default to centered. So there are a lot of videos out there on how to fix this because most of us flyers, if you're watching this, don't want auto centering throttles. Well, from Banggood, you have the option to get this in a number of colors, including this blue and green and purple and pink, orange, something. And they already set the throttle to mode two or mode one for you. So I've got mine set to mode two. I've not had to crack this open yet. So I do really appreciate that. I think it's nice and it, may, it might have cost an extra $5, but it's still cheaper than most places. So if you want one, I do recommend that. Naturally, there's a link below where you can find it. Now I've been a Tyrannus guy for the last three years or so. I started in this hobby with a Tower Hobbies four channel, 72 megahertz, and then got a Futaba nine channel something. It was, it was really nice, but it was really expensive. And then when 2.4 gigahertz started to come around, I went to Spectrum, had a DX8 for a while, decided I didn't need eight channels, got a DX6i and used that until I started getting the drones and went with Tyrannus because for less money than that DX6i, I could have all the Tyrannus features, everything I needed, all the additional programmability and all the additional channels and everything available. So that's what I've stuck with ever since. I've, I've really liked it. FreeSky came out with the Horus, which I had no interest in, but then they came out with the cheaper option. And I've wanted a controller for my son for a while. And when I saw this one, especially when I could get it in colors, it was perfect, but it's not quite perfect. There's two things that are missing from this. One, it doesn't come with an SD card. I don't know why it doesn't come with an SD card. This is the SD card I use with it. I don't know how fast it is. I don't really care. It doesn't matter much for this radio. I spent $5 on this card at the hardware store because I wanted one that day and that was the cheapest place I could find it. They just happened to have one. Eight gigabyte, it's not huge, but that's more than enough. It works great. So whatever the cheapest micro SD card you can get is, use that. You don't need class 10 or whatever, it's fine. The other thing people didn't like is that it doesn't come with a rechargeable battery. I put in six double A's when I got this and it says they're about half gone and I have used this a lot. I had, haven't logged how many hours I've got on it, but it's a lot. So six double A batteries last a long time. Also, this is a tray that you can remove. So you have options for rechargeable LiPo batteries or lithium iron, which is probably the more likely candidate for this. But there's nothing wrong with using double A's in this. The investment is very small. These are the cheapest double A's I can find, and they have done very, very well for me. If you get a set of rechargeable double A's, you can put those in and keep one set on the charger and one set on here, and you're good to go. My Spectrum used to use double A's, and I kind of appreciate it sometimes because one time I got to the field and realized I had forgotten to charge my radio. But I was able to run to the gas station down the street, get double A's, and be good to go. So there are some advantages to this, and they've lasted long enough that I've been very happy with them. I don't think that's too bad, but there are multiple options. Probably in another video, we'll cover some options for that. I do get. You do get the bay with this, so it uses the same modules as the larger Tyrannus, which is nice. So this radio can do literally anything. So besides that, there's actually very few differences besides form factor between the full radios. It, it's hard to justify spending more on the larger radio unless you get the really nice gimbals in it. Switch-wise, they are a little bit different. The larger X9 has the knobs on the side, which I don't believe I've ever seen anyone use, but there are a couple scenarios where that might come up. The knobs here are just a little bit different, and I've got a few more three-way switches. So that's a three-way switch. Oh, that's a three-way switch there. Switch-wise, the only real difference is the top. I have additional switches on the top of my X9 versus the X7, and those actually have made a difference for me. This is the big one for me. I use this as my mode select, and it's only a two-way switch and that has been very annoying. Not huge because normally I'll just use angle mode or acro mode and switch back and forth, but I kind of want to be able to have horizon available. When I'm recording a video, I will do my line of sight test in horizon mode so I can do flips and whatnot to see how that goes. And that does is nice for that. So we're gonna try and fix that in this video. It is also a lot skinnier. It actually makes this look pudgy by comparison. And you've got rubber grips on the back, which I like have been very good for me and I like it. The place it really shines is this knob. This knob is way better than these buttons. The button menus on the Tyrannus is just confusing. 
trying to get through the menus here on the left is the same, although it does make just a little more sense. These buttons are backwards on this side and it, it just works better because there I, I should have gone into page, but I went into menu there and I go into page to go through my options, which are pretty much the same. When I want to select one though, I do enter and up and down. I, I don't know, like up and down, is that going to go, is up or is plus going to go right or minus going to go right? I don't know. With my knob here, it just makes more sense. It just works out the way you would logically expect. So I actually really like that. Hopefully the next generation of these might come with a knob. Technically, this is a bigger, higher resolution screen, but everything I get on this one has been just fine. It really does give me everything I need to know. So I'm not gonna tell you exactly what version you have to load because it depends on what comes on the radio. In this case, uh, mine used 2.2 version six for the card because they had actually updated it before they shipped it to me with whoever does this work for Banggood. But then once you do, you also need to load the Amber Sound Pack, which I'll link to both of these down below for where you need to get them. That's super easy. All you have to do is copy that file right into the sounds directory. But then when you turn it on, Welcome to OpenTX. Thank you, Amber. So failsafe is not set on this radio, which is good. It tells me that. But then I'm ready to go. So setup is very easy. You put in the card in your computer, load the files, and then you're good to go. But I want to see now if I can fix my one drawback to this issue. Actually, I'm probably going to do two things. There's two things I want to be different on this radio. One, these are notched right now, and I want to change that. I don't want this to be notched for a quadcopter because sometimes level is actually between these two notches. So I don't want that. And then I want to change the switch. I don't want this switch to be a two-way switch. I want it to be a three-way switch. And this switch, which is a three-way switch, I don't care about. I am just fine if that's a two-way switch. I'm gonna find out if I can swap these. I don't wanna set the radio down on its gimbals or on the sticks because that could be bad for it. So what I'm gonna do here is I've got just some foam. I'm gonna try and set this on. I think it's just these two screws which will remove it, but I'm not sure, so let's find out. Looks like I might have to take out the battery container. I bet there's another screw underneath here. I didn't even have to take out the batteries. Once I opened the compartment, I could see the two screws right here. There we go. One nice, easy to get to container. Unplug the JST lead so we can get that out of the way. So there's the guts of it. Now, my first thing for the throttle, there's two sets of metal here. What I wanna do is, this one which you can see has a notch in it, is what's pressing down now. That is pressing against a gear that has teeth on it, and the other side is smooth, which will apply pressure without those notches. You can see that pretty well here. There's the piece that moves right there, and it's pressing against teeth. So all I should have to do here, see if I can get it so you can see it, is loosen this screw so those teeth don't touch anymore. It does have to be the top screw because the bottom piece is all one piece of metal, so you can't loosen that. You have to loosen this one. There we go. Now when I move this, now when I move this, it doesn't notch anymore. I can set it wherever I want to. The other side is still pressed down against the smooth edge to provide resistance so it doesn't just flop around. So there, that's exactly what I want. One down. So for the next one here, these two switches look like they're in the right place and it looks like I'll be able to trade them. All I have to do is remove this piece on both of them. There's the one on the front. Take that off, switch the switches, switch the switches, and I think it'll work. I think it'll fit. Let's find out. I should say there's a special tool made just for this that kind of latches into both sides and twists it around. I don't have that, so I'm just gonna have to figure something out. Okay, all I did is I just grabbed it just a little bit with some needle nose pliers, and now it'll just twist right off. So I take that off. And this piece will slide through. There we go, there's one out. I'll do the other one. I'll show you doing this one. So I just grabbed this piece just a little bit. I'm sure I'm making some people cringe, but just turn it, tighten it, turn it just a little bit to loosen it, and then you can do the rest of it with your fingers. Maybe. Oh, sure. Famous last words. There we go, just a little more, and it will come right off. 
So I don't want to really mar it. It's a nice new radio. There's that piece. That's also the opportunity to replace those. So now I've got this switch out. I want to see if I can slide this. Actually, well, will that fit in up there? There we go. So now I've got this switch, which fits in right there. So now up is the equivalent of what was back. There we go, that's good and tight. There, perfect. Now my arm switch, single switch, smooth notch. And then last but not least, there we go, I fit that one in and I'll tell you I cheated. I went back and watched the video to make sure I had this turned the right way because I want what was up to now be back. So that way I'm at stage basically one, two, three, and I'm in the right spot. So there's an advantage of recording this is you can make sure you don't screw it up because I'd be really ticked off if I got it backwards. If I had to uh, take it back apart and redo it. Now we just screw this on, I'll tighten it down. Now this is one thing that they also did better on this than they did on the, that's not tight enough, on the X9. Because on the X9, to, in order to put this back together, you've gotta have everything just lined up perfectly in order to get it to stay. And uh, it's not the case here. Everything is just going to stay in place because these, the way it's designed is just better. So there, there we go. Arm, auto mode, horizon mode, Acro mode. Oh, I love it. So much better. So much better. Now I have to make sure I reconnect this JST so I don't forget about it because that would be a nightmare. Here we go. Tip for putting this back together. See those long pins? They have to go through this hole right here. So you got to get that lined up just right or else you'll end up breaking something. There we go. Like a glove. Now, four screws. There we go, all screwed back together and ready to go. Welcome to OpenTX. Thank you, Amber. Throttle warning. Sorry, Amber. Switch warning. Double sorry, Amber. There we go. Fails have not set on this model. Great. Oh, I love it. So this switch is a little long, and this switch is a little short, but that's just the way things are. Yeah. And that's just the way things are. I don't care about that so much. Now I have a nice, smooth throttle. I can arm. And oh, you know, it's kind of nice. I can actually reach that a little easier with my thumb now. If I need to flip it up and just disarm an emergency, I can do it even better. And now I can control my modes, which works out awesome. I know this is not going to be a mod for everybody. Not everybody wants these the way I do, but that's the way I've controlled these for a long time. And I hate to change. Yep. And I can confirm I got those switches right. So there's up middle down good the right the other, the only other thing i'm gonna have to do is go switch the switches on the models that i'm using this on because they'll be backwards right now if you found this useful give it a like and comment down below with whether you like this mod or did i just totally screw it up with these switches also which color would you want to go for what i kind of wanted to do was buy two of these a purple and a green one and swap the back so take off the back of the purple and put the green one on it and vice versa and that would be pretty freaking awesome but I could only buy one. Although I do have a black one also that I'll eventually give away. That would be pretty cool if it was blue and black. And until next time. Welcome to OpenTX.